Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of my next auth tutorial. And in this part, we're gonna be looking at how to set up social providers such as GitHub, Google, and things like that, as well as the old fashioned username and password credentials. So um, let's get into it. And a quick summary of what a social provider or a social login is, is pretty much anytime you go to a website and you try to log in and you see those different options like sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, those are just social providers and it allows you to kind of use the OAuth protocol to kind of um, authenticate and authorize a user to use your application but kind of delegating that responsibility to that social provider. So it just kind of adds another way for, it gives the user pretty much freedom to choose how they want to authenticate with your app. And so let's see how to do it with GitHub. Again, you can see here in their next auth documentation that they actually have a bunch of different providers, but I'm just gonna use GitHub because uh, for me, it's kind of one of the easiest to set up. Um, so pretty much what I'm doing is, as, and they also do have great documentation on how to actually do that, how to actually go into GitHub and do it, but I'm gonna walk you through you guys um, how to do that. So pretty much all we gotta do is we do need to add the GitHub provider to our next auth page. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do uh, GitHub provider and then we also need to make sure we import that from our um, providers here. And for some reason in their documentation, they have like back ticks as their code. I, I don't know why, but make sure that that's a string. Um, so that, so there we go. So GitHub provider, and then we're gonna have to add two new environment variables, that being the GitHub client ID and the GitHub client secret. But how do we get those? The way that we get those is if we go to GitHub, and so here you will navigate to your profile so you can see there's Chaboy, and then pretty much what you gotta do is you go to developer settings, and you go to OAuth apps, and then you click new OAuth application. And so once you do that, let's just do next auth uh, test app. You name it, just give it your local host uh, 3000. It doesn't really need a description, but you do need an authorization callback URL. And this is specific to uh, whatever the type of social login you're doing. And the structure is pretty much the same. So what you need to do is HTTP localhost 3000. So that's just because that's where we're just running it locally right now. But this would be um, if you want to change it to, let's say, uh, like a production environment, just make sure it's to the correct domain, uh, API auth, and then you have callback and then you have the provider that you're using. So since we're using GitHub, it is GitHub. If you were using Google, it'd be Google. So um, pretty simple to do. And then we just register our application. And once you register your application, you're given a couple of things. So you're given the client ID and you're giving, uh, you actually do need to go ahead and generate a new client secret. So since I'm gonna be de uh, deleting this app, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see that it actually provides this client secret and make sure that you copy this uh, because if not, you can only see it once. If not, you'd have to regenerate it. So go ahead and do that. Everything looks like it's set up correctly and let's go ahead and update the application and then go back into our code and add those uh, values to some environment variables. And once you've gone ahead and added those environment variables, if we go to our application here and let's try to sign in, you'll see that now we have this option, sign in with GitHub. So if we go ahead and click that, it should go ahead and as you can see it signed me in as documentationnerd.gmail.com. And that's just because I'm already signed into GitHub. So it just pretty much took the session from GitHub and signed me in here. And if you don't see an email, uh, I kind of was getting a little confused as to, I was like, why don't I see the email associated? You do need to have a public email set for if you are using GitHub in order to actually access uh, the profile email. And yeah, so that's pretty much how to just set up like a quick social provider. Again, it's their documentation is great. If you wanna set up Google, if you want to, let's say for example, set up, they have Bungie. I didn't even know you can OAuth with Bungie, but I guess you can OAuth with uh, Bungie if you want. Battle.net, Auth0, Atlash. And so it gives you a bunch of options and actually how to do that. And uh, another one is Okta as well. So you can, if you wanna use Okta as I did in one of my videos, you can actually set up this Okta provider and do it that way. So it's pretty easy to set up as you can see. But now let's focus on the other one, which is credentials. So credential provider pretty much allows you to sign in with uh, credentials such as username and password and things like that. 
Again, just as a disclaimer, um, I don't recommend ever setting up credentials provider for any new projects. Username and password is kind of uh, starting to get a little bit outdated and really dangerous because there are a lot of ways for users to kind of get uh, their information stolen and just kind of like social engineering and things like that. It just opens up a lot of different attack vectors. So if you are starting out a new project, I personally recommend use the email provider as well as maybe just social providers and things like that. But don't necessarily uh, set up credentials provider, but credentials provider does come in handy if you are integrating with, let's say an old uh, kind of, an old authentication process where you do have users with uh, username and password. And let's see how to quickly do that. So uh, to do that, what we need to do is first we need to import. So if we look at their documentation here, let's just import uh, credentials provider. And so let's just put that over here. And again, not sure why they chose to do backticks, but hey, power to them. So yeah, so then we'll add that, go away. So we implement the credential provider and then let's add that to our list of uh, providers. I'm just going to make this a little alphabetical order, but then let's go ahead and add that. And then within this credentials provider, we do need to create a couple of things. So if we click uh, control space, you can kind of see what's expected. So there are two kind of required fields for this credentials provider. That is the authorized function, which is like, how do we want to handle authorization, which would just be a custom function as well as credentials. What is the information that we're going to get from this next auth form? And then you can actually add things like ID name and type, but I'm just going to leave those as the defaults for now. And so let's go ahead and add that. And I think I need to get rid of that. So here's pretty much the credentials provider. So what, what's happening here is we're actually providing this credentials object with email and password. And this is kind of what's expected. So label what type it is, the placeholder. So we're just going to have jsmith at example.com password. It's labeled password, the type of password. So this is pretty much very similar to uh, kind of HTML if you're familiar with that. So you're just adding these kinds of like uh, attributes. And then we have our asynchronous authorized function. And so I just kind of created a custom logic for this. Uh, you kind of need to provide your own logic as to how to actually authenticate with the credentials provider. But pretty much all I'm doing is I'm gonna just make a post request to this API slash login that I'm about to create. I'm gonna pass in the credentials, uh, content type application JSON, and then I'm gonna get a user in return. And then if the response is okay and the user is available, I just return that user. If not, I just return null. And there are quite a bit of red uh, errors going on here. And that's just because TypeScript is just having a day on as to like what errors are actually happening. But this configuration will work and I'll show you guys that. Um, but I did try to get rid of these errors, but there, it just seemed like it was, I don't, I'm not really sure what was going on with TypeScript configuration with this. But so let's go ahead and actually add the login route. So if I just add a quick login.ts. And then within this route, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much just return a name and an email. So it's just going to be John Doe at am I a real boy dot test dot com. And that's pretty much all that credentials provider is going to do. And so again, if you just quickly, just a quick summary, the authorize function is going to make a fetch request. So this would be like your login request to your backend, which would say like, Hey, username and password. Does this user exist? It does. Oh, this is the user it belongs to. Let's return that user. And then let's use that for our authentication. And yeah, so then let's go ahead and um, let's see what's going on. Oh yeah. So let's go to our application. Let's sign out. And let's sign in. And now you can see we have our credentials up here. So we have jsmith at example.com. And then we also have, let's just type in some gibberish since it doesn't really matter. And let's sign in with credentials. And so now you can see it actually went ahead and signed me in. So if I do, uh, if I look at this, you have John Doe at this. Again, if I do API slash auth slash session, you can see that I have that information. You also can see I can go to our token route and get a token for this user. And so kind of cool. So that's pretty much just how to add username and password authentication. And before we go any further with this, um, you can see that it kind of works, but since I'm actually just kind of mocking this post request and not actually creating a user or doing anything like that, um, if we look at our database here, and I just let, let me just uh, get all of this information again, you can see that the user actually wasn't created. So once you do kind of use credentials provider, make sure that you're actually uh, creating the user and next auth won't actually know how to handle that information for you since it's kind of like custom logic. 
So you can see here that the only account that's been created is this documentation nerds at gmail.com, which we actually went ahead and created. Um, so I went ahead and kind of uh, started this data, like cleaned out the database. But you can see that now in our account here, you can actually see that we have a GitHub provider account. So since we use the social provider, it actually goes ahead and kind of creates this account for you. It kind of tells you the scopes that are created with that account, um, more information like the, uh, the type, it's OAuth, provider, account ID. So that's all really cool. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is for part two of this tutorial. Um, as you can see, I just kind of quickly went over how to add social providers as well as the credential provider if needed. I'm actually gonna go ahead and kind of um, just pretty much comment this out because I do not really want to recommend using credentials provider just because again, attack vectors, everything like that. Um, I think I need to do it like this. Yep. So I don't really want to have the credentials provider, but just in case you do need to use it, I will include it in the code. But yeah, um, that's pretty much all there is to really set up a social provider. Again, their documentation is great as to how to set up different ones. So if you want, I just did GitHub, but if you want to do Google, you can, if you want to do Facebook, you can. So, um, yeah, so that's really cool. And next auth makes it really easy to do all of that. So that's why it's such an awesome library. And that's about it for part two. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful in some way. And if it was, please leave a like as well as comment and subscribe. That really helps out the channel. And I hope to see you guys in part three. So thanks for watching.